Hey guys! So I had planned on doing a Franny's Granny video today and I actually filmed it and I changed it last second because I wanted to stay fresh and topical and talk about what's going on in the world. Um, and for those of you that are new to my channel, I do make comedy videos here on YouTube, but I also try to talk about serious stuff too. I've talked about slut shaming, date rape, body image, LGBT rights, uh, safe sex, racism probably most famously. So I've talked about a lot of things and I try to do them in a comedic way that is funny and entertaining, but is also uh, educational and smart. So today I really wanted to talk to you guys about YouTube comedy and social responsibility. And the thing that influenced this was a video that got a lot of attention this week that has been since taken down that was produced by Russell Simmons called Harriet Tubman Sex Tape ADD History. And it started a bunch of YouTubers, including Jason Horton, Daystorm, and Shanna Malcolm. And the video got pulled pretty quickly because if you can judge by the title, it was awful. And it was really bad for a few different reasons. Uh, it was like a reimagining of Harriet Tubman gaining her freedom, basically by using her sexual prowess, which was the concept. And I had a few issues with this video and the subject matter. And, and first, before I jump into it, I want to explain to you just for some context. Before I got on YouTube, or right when I was starting YouTube, I started doing stand-up comedy. And I did stand-up for about four years, and I do stand up very infrequently, like off and on. And I will be the first one to admit that as a black comedian, it's really hard to not be lazy and fall back on racial stereotypes and talking about slavery. And it's really awful to admit, but I did it too a few years ago. And the reason being is I really thought, like a lot of comedians, that it made me edgy and cool and, and just showed how like I didn't care about being PC. And a lot of black comics fall into this trap, and I see it a lot here on YouTube. And the reason being, there's a fundamental like lack of understanding about the institution of slavery and how it affects the lives that we live today and how racism is still institutionalized. And we live in a country that was built on the unpaid labor and oppression of black people. And so when you see these comics telling these jokes, they're doing it because they think that it's making them seem cool to white people. Like, look, I'm not like those other black people. But what they don't realize is that those white people aren't laughing with you, they're laughing at you. And when you perpetuate those stereotypes and you degrade our history, what you're doing is giving them carte blanche to then go do that to other people. To see black people as one monolith, that we all fit this stereotype and that we should be treated as such. Or or that slavery isn't really a big deal and that the effects of slavery and institutional racism are not something that we deal with every single day of our lives. Um, and all of that is untrue. And you are really doing yourself a disservice and you're doing the people around you a disservice by doing that. So you should stop doing it. You know, somebody had to call me out on doing those stupid things. And I'm really thankful that I had a YouTube subscriber that saw my stand up. She messaged me. She, we talked on the phone. I don't remember her name, but I'm so glad that she talked to me because she really Really kind of like flipped a switch in my head and and led me down a path of a different type of conscious comedy which is what I tried to do um, so I'm really thankful to her and I'm trying to do the same thing in making this video so I hope that the people that this is directed at don't take it personally and really understand that this is coming from a place of education and not one of judgment. The next thing that really bothered me about this video is that the scene between Harriet and her slave master where she's going to seduce him in an effort to blackmail him into freeing her is that she mentions that in the past she acted like she didn't like their special time together. All these years I've been acting like I didn't love our special time together. Tonight, that's all gonna be different. Ooh, so what she's talking about is rape. When you're a slave, you cannot consent to sex with your master in the same way a prisoner cannot consent to sex with their guard. It's a matter of power dynamics. Slaves did not have agency over their body in order to consent to sex with someone that was holding them captive and abusing them. So again, 
making light of rape in this manner tells me that you do not understand the serious repercussions of rape and you also don't understand how rape was used as a tool of white supremacy in order to oppress black people. It was used as a way to hurt families, to instill fear, and during slavery it was used as a, as a way to increase their capital as if slaves were cattle and not people. They were treated as if they were animals. Uh, it was actually even taught that black women were such animals that we could not be raped. So when you talk about special time together, you're talking about rape and that's really fucked up. So when I started talking about this on Twitter, I had a few, more than a few people say, well, it's just jokes, get over it, it doesn't hurt anyone. If you don't like it, don't watch it. That's a bunch of bullshit because when you make jokes about serious subjects, especially one like rape, what you are doing is perpetuating rape culture and that has real serious detrimental effects. When you think about the fact that there are so many women and men who are victims of sexual assault and don't say something about it or when they do say something about it, people assume that uh, they're lying or they're making it up. Uh, then you realize that jokes that actually diminish the seriousness of rape actually contribute to that, especially when you have young audiences, people that are going to shape the world around us. When you start instilling in them at a young age that rape isn't a big deal or it's something to laugh about or just brush off, or it's something that can be used as leverage as was uh, insinuated in this video, what you're doing is you are hurting victims of sexual assault. Not to mention the fact to say, oh, I act as if I didn't like our special time together, but I actually did. <sighs> That's something that rapists say. Oh, I raped you, but you actually liked it. Like, no, dude. Perpetuating that idea is really messed up and it has real consequences. So it's really important that we analyze this stuff and we remember that our words have power and they have real effects when you put them out into the world. So of course, I started talking about this stuff on Twitter because I love Twitter. It kind of created a shitstorm when someone on YouTube that Shanna is really good friends with, whose name I'm not gonna mention, and even though I'm not gonna mention this person's name, I'm pretty sure it's gonna create a shitstorm anyway, because that's how this person rolls. And this person uses the N-word on their channel, has done blackface, and is extremely popular and has a huge audience. He decided to get into the fray, and it got pretty ugly, and it got ugly not just because like he and I started interacting, but because his fans then jumped in and then started like threatening my life, telling me to kill myself, calling me an, the N word, posting pictures with like slut and whore over my face, just a bunch of really disgusting things. And I think it's really important to analyze the reaction to um, this criticism by this person and by their fans, because it tells you a lot about the type of content that they're producing. When you critically analyze someone's behavior and the first thing that they do is insult you and call you names and tell you to kill yourself, it means that they realize they don't have a leg to stand on. Because I can call you out and not curse, not use any like names, insult your intelligence or your parents. I'm just gonna break shit down for you. And that's scary for some people. So the problem here is that when you have young people and you are teaching them that the way to deal with criticism is by threatening and calling names and, and just personal attacks, you are shaping impressionable young minds that are then going to go on and become people that vote in elections, have, you know, real power in our country and that's really freaking scary to me and that's exactly why I want to talk about these issues in creative ways because my goal here on YouTube is not just to make you laugh but it's also to make you think and my goal here on YouTube especially when I make videos like this is not to be buddy buddy with everybody on YouTube because there's a lot of people that are doing stuff here that I really don't agree with and it's really high school you have to kiss a lot of ass if you want to get views you have to do a lot of questionable things if you want to get a lot of views and oh, I'm really sorry I'm not about that I graduated from high school almost 10 years ago and like I try not to live in that mentality and so when I come onto YouTube I want you guys to feel like you are in a safe space where you can learn something and you know that when you come to my channel I'm never going to make you feel uncomfortable about who you are who you love where you come from what you look like and if I ever do any of those things or you ever feel uncomfortable about something that you see here that you feel 
confident enough to call it out in a constructive and intelligent non-attacking way so that I can correct my behavior if necessary because I will be the first person to tell you that I am not perfect I've never been perfect my life is a continuous journey I always want to become better and I want you guys to become better people too and like I can't I can't tell you guys to do that if I don't do it myself so I really want this to be a, a space of entertainment and education as well and I think that I'm I think I've covered I hope I gave you some stuff to think about and I guess before I go I just want to ask you guys what are you going to do or what do you try to do to create social change in the world something that's positive and really helps other people I want to hear about it in the comments below thanks so much guys for watching don't forget I post new videos every Friday so make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys next week and Franny's granny will be back for real next week. Okay, thanks so much guys. Bye.